where to wheel me in. So if you don't know, for a C-section, you are going to have your procedure in an OR or an operating room. So you're not going to have your surgery in an actual hospital room. An OR is not a scary place. It is very sterile. It is very white. It is very bright in there, but it's fine. So once they got me in there, then I had to transfer from my hospital bed to the operating table. And this is the time that you are going to get your spinal. Okay. Thankfully, my husband was able to be with me the entire time. I have heard lots of stories of hospitals like your partner can be with you the entire time except for when you get the spinal, and I don't understand why. That's definitely worth, you know, asking your hospital if you have a hospital tour before. Um, but that was never even a question. My husband came right along with me. So I was up on the table. I was up on my knees and my husband was to the side, and then there was a nurse in front of me, and I was supposed to put my arms like around her shoulders to stabilize myself, and then the anesthesiologist was around the back, and he opened the, the hospital gown, and obviously I'm butt naked, so my butt is just in this strange man's face, whatever. He sees butts all day, and this is when you have to get the spinal. Now, I am going to tell you all the truth, and I don't want to tell you all this to scare you, but I want you to be more prepared than I was. I had watched videos like this, but like the night before or two nights before my C-section, I had watched a video where a woman had said, and I'm so happy for her that this was her experience, but she was like, the spinal was nothing, you guys. I barely noticed it. I didn't have that experience. Now, if you're in active labor, I've heard that epidurals really don't hurt that much because you have your labor pains, and so it's just like a little prick, who cares? But with a scheduled C-section, you're most likely not in labor pains, and so you do notice the spinal. And I would rather you build it up in your head that it's going to be awful and then it's not so bad. Whereas I had it built up in my head where it's not going to be bad at all. And then it's not pleasant. Okay. So, but I'm going to explain why. Because it was different than I thought it was going to be. So, the actual act of like the needle going in isn't terrible. Like, I mean, it's a weird place to have a shot. So... Like, it's not, it's not pleasant, but that's not horrible. And they tell you, like, take a deep breath. But what I didn't know is how long the actual placing it kind of takes. And what I mean by it's not just, like, a shot in and out. It's not a quick thing, necessarily. He has to place it properly so that it's going to numb both sides of your body. Um, because you do have a left and a right side of your body. And so it has to be in the right position that it's going to numb both sides. So he basically was like, tell me if you can feel these little shocks. And I don't know how, I don't, was he actually shocking me? I don't know how this worked, but it felt like little fireworks throughout my legs. And it was a very weird feeling and it wasn't pleasant. And you're trying to stay still, but then you feel these like little shocks. And I was like, what do you mean by shocks? Oh, oh, that's what you mean. It really felt like, sh like fireworks. And I don't know how that was happening. Was he actually shocking me? I really don't know. But anyway, my left side went numb pretty quickly and I stopped feeling the shocks. The right side, it took quite a bit longer and I felt, kept feeling them. And yeah, it was, it probably was like three minutes, but it felt like three hours. Um, and at some point my doctor came in while I was having this done and typically I would be like, hi, how are you? And I was like, don't talk to me. Um, and so, yeah, and you have to be honest, like you you know, wait until you don't feel anything because you obviously want everything to go numb. And so it took a little while, but then finally it did, like I couldn't feel him anymore. And so he was able to, you know, place it properly and inject me or whatever and then take the needle out. So yeah, it just, it was a different experience than I had anticipated. So it's not... It's not horrible pain or anything, but it's definitely not pleasant. And most likely, it's going to be the most painful shot kind of a situation you've ever had. Unless you've had intense, you know, 
things before. But for me, previously, I had had, like, IVs and, like, little shots in my arm, and that was it. So, yeah. That's, that's that. You go numb really, really fast, and so they had to, like, swing you around. Um... Oh yeah, and here's two things that I've heard that can happen with spinals. They are pretty rare, so don't don't anticipate that this is going to happen, but if it does, just so that you're prepared. First off, I've heard if they place it a little bit wrong, it can give you like migraines for a couple days after birth. Obviously, if you're getting headaches, tell your doctor, but most likely it would have just been caused by the epidural or the spinal. So, that is a possibility. It didn't happen to me, but it can happen. And then the other one, this also didn't happen to me, but I've heard sometimes maybe they put too much, I'm not sure, or your body just reacts differently. The numbing can go above your waist, like it can go up into your chest. And um, from what I've heard from other women that this has happened to, it just can be kind of a scary feeling because then you, I guess you don't really feel like your lungs anymore. And so if uh, it can feel like you can't breathe, which you can breathe, you totally can. You just, you have to be more conscious of it. I don't exactly understand what it, what it means, but from what I've heard in other videos, it can be really scary, but it's actually not, you know, it's not going to hurt you or anything. Um, so if that happened to you and you feel comfortable kind of explaining your experience, that would probably be really helpful to other women. Um, but if you do start to feel that happening, just let your anesthesiologist know and try not to freak out too much because it, it probably doesn't mean like anything bad is happening. It just is numbing a little bit higher than it's supposed to. So anyway, you go numb really fast. I thought it was going to be a really, really scary experience and I was going to feel like I was paralyzed and blah, blah, blah. And it really wasn't, it wasn't that scary. Um because I knew what was happening. And so, yeah, it's weird to not necessarily be able to move your toes, but like, you're just, I don't know, it's not that scary. So if you're really nervous about that, I didn't find it that scary. And immediately they put up two drapes. So how my hospital did it, there was like a clear drape and then there was a like opaque blue drape. And they told me whenever they're starting to pull the baby out, they would drop the blue one so I could watch the baby come out and then they would hold the babies over the the drape so I could see. If you want to see the surgery, maybe you can ask for that. I didn't want to. Um, sorry, my dog is sitting right outside the door and she's just, she wants in so bad. So anyway, um, and then they just got to work. The anesthesiologist was to my right side and my husband was to the left and they were both just chit-chatting. My, the anesthesiologist immediately turned on some music and it, just made us laugh. So my husband and I have pretty different tastes in music. He loves country music and I don't. And one of his favorite artists is Luke Bryan. Bryan? Bryant? I'm not sure. One of those two. And so we just always are laughing at home because he's like, oh, Luke has a new, a new song. And I'm like, great. So this anesthesiologist just turned on Luke Bryan and... And my husband was, we just looked at each other and he was like, oh. and so our daughters were born to country music. <laughs> I probably could have asked him to change the music, but it was just kind of funny. So, but yeah, so they started going to it and a few minutes went by and I was thinking like, are they going to let me know when they're starting? And my mom had told me the story when she had her first C-section with my brother. The doctor had asked her, like, did you feel that? And she said, no. Did you feel that? And she said, no. And he was like, did you feel that? And she said, no. He's like, okay, great, because I just cut you open. And so I kind of knew that maybe they're just going to start without telling me. So I asked my husband, I was like, can you look over the drape and tell me, like, if it looks like they're going to start soon? And so he peeked over and he was like, oh, they have already started. Like, you are cut open. And I was like, oh, okay. So that was good because, like, I couldn't feel anything. But it was just kind of a crazy moment. So only a few moments later, the craziest feeling ever happened. I felt this insane weight lifted. 
And then we heard this, like a straw sucking liquid out. And y'all, if you are pregnant, especially if you are pregnant with multiples, your belly is so heavy. It is so heavy, you guys. And so this insane weight lifted is just such a crazy feeling. And we realized they had just cut open the the amniotic sac, which typically, like, if your water breaks, all that liquid just spills out of you. But with a C-section, they have to actually cut it open. And that straw was sucking all the the liquid out. And so not only was it just, just a crazy moment, but also I realized, like, oh, my gosh, they're about to pull a baby out of me. Like, we're about to meet our daughter right now. And it's true. A moment later... I felt another insane weight lifted and they dropped the drape and they pulled my little Evie out. And she did immediately cry. C-section babies don't always cry right away. I think it has something to do if they come out of the canal, it's such a tight squeeze that like it pushes all the liquid that they've swallowed and stuff out. And so then as soon as they come out, they go like... <gasps> A natural baby will then take a gasp and start crying. But C-section baby, a lot of times they have to like clear all that out before they cry. So if your baby doesn't cry right away, it doesn't necessarily mean that anything's wrong. But Evie did. She cried right away. Um, and then they held her up over. And you guys, seeing your baby for the first time, especially your firstborn, is the craziest feeling. <sighs> like, so... The way that it happened for me is I have a number of nieces and nephews who I love so much. I would do anything for my nieces and nephews. I love them so much. And they love me too. But at the end of the day, I know that I'm not mom. And I know that they're always going to go to mom first, as they should. But it's always like just ripped my heart just a little bit knowing because I love them so much. But I know I'm not number one, which I shouldn't be. But when I saw Evie for the first time, you guys, I just, it washed over me that like, she's mine. I get to take her home. I'm mama. She hopefully is going to love me so much and she's going to choose me first. And, you know, obviously I would do anything in the world for her. Like it just... Oh, the, there's this instant bond and love and connection. And I know it doesn't happen that way for every woman. And that's okay if it takes you a little bit of time to bond with your baby. So don't feel bad if that doesn't happen. But I think for most, for most women that does, that you do have that instant connection. Um, so then they did, they took her away real quick to the next room to assess her and stuff. And then it was on to the next baby. And I really thought it was going to be like 10 more minutes. You know, I thought it was going to be, you know, quite a bit of time between the two babies. It wasn't. Literally a few seconds later, I felt that weight lifted and we heard the sucking noise again. And I was like, oh my gosh, they're, they're going to bring her out now too. And I don't even know if they ever put the drape back up. They might have just left it down. And literally a moment later, they brought Winnie out and she was the one that they were more worried about. And she, thankfully she cried right away too. Cause I was more worried about her. She was tiny, tiny, tiny. She was four pounds, eight ounces. And you guys, my family, the Dawson family makes massive babies. I was nine pounds, eight ounces. My nephew was 10 pounds, 11 ounces. Like we make huge babies in my family. My husband's family actually makes really small babies. So them being twins, I think they also took after my husband's family. So both my babies were really small, but Winnie was very small. And so when they held her up, oh my goodness, she was not only so tiny, it was such a shock to see, I had never seen such a small baby before, but also it was just such a relief because we had been so worried about her throughout the whole pregnancy. Um, yeah. In future videos, I'll probably talk a little bit about that experience, but it was just such an overwhelming relief to see her crying and okay. And so they also took her off to the next room and immediately started like fixing me back up. And my husband, they took him to the room next door as well. And so then I was there alone, <laughs> but it was okay. Um, and then a few moments later, my husband 
came back out and he was actually holding Winnie, my baby B. And I was a little bit surprised that he was holding her because they had just taken her out. But turns out, I didn't know this was happening. And thankfully I didn't. Actually, Evie, the first baby, she had some breathing issues. And so my husband saw all this happen. And he later told me it was pretty scary just because we didn't know. We didn't know anything about birth. But they had to actually like put the, is it called a respirator? Like put the, the breathing thing over her. And I don't think she was in like dire situation or anything, but it was, it, apparently there was a little bit of a, of a scare with her. And so my husband saw it all happen. And so, but it, I think he said it was only like about a minute long that they were like working with her and then she was fine. But that's why he took, he brought Winnie out to me first. I'll insert some pictures because the anesthesiologist was there and he took some pictures and he took some videos of them actually being born, which I'm not going to show those because they're a little bit graphic. But looking back, I'm so glad he did that because now we have like literal videos of them being born, which is kind of cool. Uh, but anyway, he took some pictures of us with Winnie. She was so wide awake and aware. It was really neat. Um, I was expecting for like the first hours of their life to, for them to be like, like not really wanting to open their eyes and being grouchy, but she was like wide eyed. She was looking around. She was making eye contact. It was so cute and she was so tiny. So my husband brought her out and she was all wrapped up and he put her like here. So I kind of got to like half hold her. And so we spent a few minutes with her and then he took her back out and brought Evie out. For some reason, we didn't get any pictures with Evie right there, which is a bummer, but same thing. She was, she was a little bit more like, not as, as, you know, hyper aware of everything. Um, but it was so sweet to get to kind of half hold them. And then it was time to take them to recovery. And so my husband went with them and I was left in the OR as they were stitching me up. And that was kind of a weird time because I was just like, I just want to be with my babies. Can you hurry it up? It took a little while for them to do all the stitching and all that kind of stuff. But then my doctor was like, okay, we're done. And I think my doctor said something really nice and encouraging. My doctor was so nice. Um, but I don't really remember at that point what was happening. But then they, because I was still super numb, they had to lift me from the table back onto my um, hospital bed and then they were wheeling me out and I remember as we were leaving the OR there was a, a digital clock up on the wall and it said 745 as they were wheeling me out and remember they wheeled me in at 655 and that included getting the spinal and all the prep and all that so the entire experience took like 50 minutes which that was shorter than I thought. So that's kind of, hopefully that's an encouragement. It's like less than an hour of your life, most likely. And that's giving birth to twins. It would be even less if there were just one. So yeah, that was, I was like, wow, it's only 745 and I'm now a mom. Wow, crazy. And so then they wheeled me immediately into my, my room that I was going to be in. And it was like just a few moments later that my husband came in and they wheeled in both girls. And I'll insert some pictures of that too. That was the first time I got to hold both of them. And oh my gosh, what a crazy moment. Ah, I was so happy. Um, but I was also really out of it. And so I'm wrapping this up. I'm almost done. Last thing I want to go over was something that I'm still kind of salty about, but hopefully you don't have to make the same mistake. So immediately skin to skin, which is great. But they also, if you are planning to breastfeed, they want to breastfeed, get you to breastfeed within like the first hour or at least hour, hour, two hours, somewhere in there. And so after only a few minutes with my babies, a lactation consultant came in and was like, okay, let's go ahead and breastfeed. And so she got us all set up and... I was tandem feeding them and she taught me all the things and she was in there for like a good 40 minutes probably. And yeah, we did that whole thing. I don't remember any of it. I don't remember a dang thing. And I wasn't put under, so it's not like 
anesthesia or what is it called like amnesia because of the anesthesia or anything like that I think I was just so overwhelmed and so stimulated and I was kind of out of it because of you know I just had surgery so I literally don't remember anything that she taught me and for the following days I was just like I felt so unprepared for breastfeeding and at one point I was really frustrated like a day or two later and my husband was like, well, you need to do this. And he like showed me and I was like, how do you know that? And he was like, well, the consultant showed us. And I was like, who, what? Literally, I don't remember anything that she taught me. And yes, lactation consultants came in and checked every day, but they would come in for about like three minutes and I usually wasn't breastfeeding at the time anyway, and they would just be like, do you have any questions? And I didn't even know what questions to ask. And so I felt so unprepared for breastfeeding. And so it's not that I'm mad at the lactation consultants, and I'm sure that doesn't even happen to everybody. I don't know why I have this weird memory loss. But I would just encourage you to ask the consultant to come back in a day later or two days later, no matter if you had a C-section or a, a natural birth or whatever, and just ask them to go over instructions again. Because I didn't, I don't think I even realized that I didn't remember until it was almost time to go home and I had two babies and one of my babies was so small and ugh, that's a whole thing. I'm going to talk about that situation. The, ugh, you guys, that's a whole thing that I'm still really, really frustrated about. Um, but again, like just ask a lactation consultant to come back. And if you happen to be a lactation consultant or you know one, maybe just tell them my experience and say like, maybe just make sure you go in, especially first time moms, go back in and really check with them. Like don't just ask, do you have any questions? Cause you don't know what questions to ask. So yeah. Not to end on a bummer note, but that was just kind of a frustrating thing. So that is my main experience. We were in the hospital until Thursday. We left about noon, so it was a Monday to a Thursday. That's how long we were there. They almost let us go a little bit early, but they wanted to monitor Winnie because she was so small for a little bit. Um, I'm going to do a, a video in the future talking about just those first couple weeks postpartum. So I'll go more into those first few days in the hospital and then going home, what that's going to look like. I'm going to talk about that in a future video. So if you haven't subscribed, I would love if you would consider subscribing. And I try to upload every Thursday unless, you know, mom life gets insane and I'm a couple days late. But I try for every Thursday to upload a video for you guys. So that'll be coming in a couple of weeks. I also have some travel videos coming as well for you guys. So... If you have any questions, I would be more than happy to talk to you about them. I love talking about this. Um, what a crazy experience giving birth is. So I hope that you found this helpful and hopefully encouraging. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to comment down below or send me a message and we can chit chat about this kind of stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.